as we kick this off and we get this underway in the bottom right hand side of the map. Our final series of today, we're going to say goodbye to one more player. Is it going to be our blue town in the bottom right? It is Oliveira. That's in the top left. Our red zerg is Rogue. Of course, Rogue may be the first zerg to be eliminated from the tournament. All three zergs I've ended so far have stayed alive. This is Rogue's chance to move on with the rest of them. Been a fun day. Actually, I had some great games. That PvP was actually really fun as well. That game too was fantastic. Awesome stuff back and forth. Can't believe Hero is out and Creator is moving on through. That's incredible stuff, obviously, as well. Awesome, awesome games today. It's really been an absolute blast here so far. Exciting stuff. All right, well, we get into action. Get this up and running and seeing what we're going to get up to. We're going to have our SUVs popping out of that command center. The barracks are about to finish up. Hatch Castle Pool coming in. A couple of drones being brought up as well. All of that settling down for the moment. As we bring this into action. So again, getting things up and rolling. SUV just going to continue across the map, Command Center and the Reaper in production as well, bringing all that through. SUV just going to go moving about, trying to see what's up. Again, a couple of queens and a few lings all coming through as well, so bringing that in at the moment. Gonna fight a couple of lings, taking some damage, so a few shots going back and forth. Just gonna be having a couple of lings, continue to take hits. Just gonna back it up again. A couple CCs coming through, the link speed coming up as well. Seeing that queen still coming over. Reaper taking a few more shots. Lings in the drone coming across as well. Seeing that hatchery dropping down into that third base position. Again, starport coming up, refinery coming through. Of Shadows Chasing. Thank you so much for the fresh prime sub, mate. Appreciate it. You're doing great. Thank you very much for the support. Aliens, Reaper, continue to come about for the moment. We've seen a couple of Reapers and the Hellions still moving about for now. Just going to be having a couple of Hellions with that Banshee going to be a big part of this. When it goes down, a couple of Creep Tumors getting dropped as well. Some damage being dealt. Again, the Cloaking and the Banshee continues to come by for now. So bringing this up and online. We'll get rid of the couple creep tumors, and again, the queen's obviously going to be a big part of that defense there. To continue to try and push that back. And the Hellion's just going to come back over.
We've seen our queen and our lair continue to come online. The Hellions getting up to the top. We've seen the uh, Hellions just going to come across and the couple of crypt teamers going down. Queen's still taking damage. Great Stimpak coming through. Let's get those couple of overseers coming about for the moment. And just gonna cloak, hatchet continue to come in. That one one and the stem continues through as well. So just bringing that in. And it's obviously the opportunity for the banshees to maybe get some damage when they fly toward the net, uh, third, but there's a spore there. Little drones just out of position gonna be caught, and we don't quite get the cancel on that spore. And she's going to get pushed up to the top. Let's see not bad defense so far. Only three drones. Very acceptable, I would say, a lot of the time in this case. Pretty reasonable. Let's do have, again, the combat shield starting up. The factory continues in. And Hellion is continuing to gather in. Again, our 1 1 upgrades and our combat shield coming up. The melee upgrades come by as well. Just seeing our queens is going to drop some more creep teamers in. Marines and the Wooden Mine is going to get up the right. Hope to maybe get involved here in the next few moments. Just have ourselves a push forward. An Overlord already in some trouble. Engine gets taken down. It's going to be seeing the Marines stemming up. A couple of team is going down immediately. Killing Bane still coming back across. The Banshees taking damage as well. Now the Queens can chase away. Wooden Mine's going to go off. Big chunk of Bane's getting taken down. Oliveira with a 1 1 set of upgrade advantage right now as well. About to finish Combat Shield. Wouldn't really be going to do more in this attack. Not sure if he's going to be able to find too much, but. I mean, stepping in and out, stepping back and forth. There's definitely opportunities. Queens, Lings, Bane's all setting up to come and be a part of this as a couple more lings continue to get taken out and loading back into those medevacs and evacuating away see now you know still gathering up again the upgrades finishing up now on the side of uh, rogue at least so you will even up the upgrades he's a start 2-2 asap but he doesn't have the money for it as he's investing into other things which means that once again Oliveira is going to uh, open up an upgrade lead at some point of this game. So we'll see if that comes in to be meaningful. Further down the line, as our bio pulling back, a couple of to the front go down. Oliveira again, a fourth base into position during this, trying to drop around the top side as well. But Rogue's defense looking uh, looking good. But Rogue typically becomes very good at in these scenarios. He's starting to run by, and if he can hit some of those counterattacks, it'd feel a lot better for him than if he just continues to sit back here defensively. He just sit back and plays defense and I'm not really loving this at all. But to be fair, Oliveira is applying so much pressure. How do you get across the map in a meaningful way? I mean, I can say all I want that I'd love to see Rogue counterattack him, but if the counterattacks aren't available, then then there ain't always you know, there ain't always something you can do necessarily, right? So I guess it's gonna be kind of tough across the board as a couple of different lings. It's gonna take some shots. Being done, the Ling Bane Hydra continues across as well. Two two upgrades coming up, drilling close about to finish. Plus one vehicle plating is already halfway done as our Ling Bane Hydra continues to push around. Gonna get up to this high ground. Bio gonna get jumped on. I mean, this is a much better set of fights from Rogue. He crashes into that Widow Mine as well, so none of the Widow Mines get to fire here. That definitely is very painful. These veins are gonna roll through as well. He's gonna crash into this mineral line. SCVs continue to take big hits. 16 SCVs. Going down for the moment as the Marines get up to the top side. Just going to jump onto this hatch as well. Hatchery will fall. Okay, well, Rogue at least taking some damage because Oliveira is definitely getting pushed back and having a bad time. Rogue losing a base at least is something in Oliveira's favor for the moment. And 
continues over. We have our armies continuing about here. Just gonna have ourselves a 2-2 upgrades coming through as well. Things run in, CC is going to take some damage, couple of SEVs in trouble as well. I was going to see a few more shots coming about as we do have ourselves the cloaking coming up. The concussive shells and ghosts continue through also. A CC burning but not quite going to drop. Obviously Oliveira getting straight towards five base is going to be ending up in a pretty good position there in general. So we're going to be able to get that on the go. So have the medivacs forced to lift up and back away. So they will do exactly that also. As our marines continue forwards, a few more creep teamers going down. Liberator Ghosts, plus three attack on, uh, plus three armor on the uh, engineering bay coming up as well, but no plus three attack. Oliveira pulling a bit of a Bjorn, starting up that armor before the attack upgrade. It's not typically the way you're meant to do things, but it's the way that this one's going. Let's do have ourselves these Lings and Veins and Hydras coming down the ramp again. Rest of the bio showing up and pushing forward as well. Bio Ghost continues across, Ling Bane coming through, Overseers up in the skies. Continue to make our way over for the moment, just gonna have ourselves the army collecting together. Drone gonna get grabbed. The snipe's coming down immediately, one look it goes down right away there. Another Widow Mine shot firing, the Ghost pressing forward. The Medivax continue to come about. Snipe's coming around, again, just going to be seeing a little bit of Ling Bane trying to engage forward. That's the counterattack, by the way, so as Rogue finally got some more map control, slash less map control of Oliveira is available, Rogue is going to be hitting these counterattacks. I'm so happy to see it, because I think that's why he's at his best, and I mean, he's going to make this game a little bit chaotic, as SCVs begin to go down, Oliveira's defense against those uh, against that run by just not good enough, trying to split away from those mines, not sure how they hit, Ob's just cut, cut, cut away at the wrong moment. We are going to see so many SCVs going down, and Rogue starting to push his way back through the rest of this army as well. Ghost being chased, just about going to live. 37 SCVs going down, and that number is rising, as we have got Oliveira sitting here. 105 army supply to the 90. Through the mines looking to fire, factory going to be burning. Three more Liberators, a few Marauders coming up, Ghosts on the way as well. Bane Hydra trying to press forward once again. Step back and see the units getting down to the low ground. A few Bane's going to get caught. And Rogue's done a lot, but he still needs to find a way to clean up the army. But that's what the Lurkers are for, right? Now these Lurkers out now. Just about on time to start really holding this force away. Double expanding top right and bottom left. Needs to keep one of these bases alive realistically to have a good shot in this. Thank you, j by the way, for the Prime sub. I feel like I missed that one. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. As... See our Medivac escaping up that left-hand side. I'm just going to see the Ling Hydra over there. A couple of Medivacs taking some shots. The Knight is never coming through. Advanced Ballistics plus three attack. Widow Mines all producing SCVs on the way in. Rogue is going to try and catch a few units in the center here, but the Ghost will cloak, and Rogue is very well known from uh, lately for making way too many Overseers, but only seven in this game so far. Uh, he's made a ridiculous amount of Overseers in some of the recent uh, matches that we've covered of him. It's kind of funny how many he's uh, made sometimes. As our Marines. It's going to come through. The Lurk is going to pop out of this Nidus network in the main base. It's never a good sign for Oliver and Nidus in the main is always rough to deal with. Fortunately, he's got Liberators that are going to put in some serious work. The Lurkers are going to reposition and see what else they can do. They're going to commit to this then. 
I mean, if they're going to commit to this, they need to start target firing. Like, the Ghost Academy down, for example, would be a good grab. And he should eat. Oh, actually, he got some Hydras out. So he's going to protect the Lurkers now. Oliveira going to start losing all your production, buddy. That's really not going to be good for you in the long run. Lurkers continue to go, go. A couple more Lurkers coming up. We're actually going to see the Ghost, though, sniping through the Lurkers. So now Rogue is going to lose a lot of the Lurkers. A couple more morphing into the corner. Going to back away. Prince coming over. Overlord taking damage. And back still coming by here. Have seven additional lurkers continue to produce 16 lings on the way up as well. All of that being brought into play right now. Our bio, our ghosts, and our medivax are gathering in together here currently. As we have more lings setting up around the bottom. Not every day you survive the Nidus lurker uh, playing to your main. The Wibs did a good, good job of buying a little bit of time initially. Got the ghost back to clean it up. Like I say, not easy. As our look is going to move back over here. The ghost is going to go pick off that tree over on the side. Couple shots going through. I'm just going to be seeing a couple of widow mines and everything coming about as well. We have ourselves the couple more shots coming through. And this base is going to go down the right. Okay, so Rogue still absolutely fighting back against Oliveira and knocking a base down there. Hey, thank you, Shepard PHX, for the Prime Sub as well. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for subscribing today as our Lings and Bane's going to uh, dive in toward that planetary fortress. This hatchery is going to drop in the front. We are going to be seeing the SCVs being busted, so another base taking damage, but will not quite go down. Again, all the SCVs will die, so. If nothing else, that's already uh, sizable and notable. Oliveira only has 44 workers left. It is costing Rogue a few units, though. His army supply down to only 97 against the 118 of Oliveira. Good jump forward there. Look, is coming about. Ghost gets grabbed. We actually have to lift him to the Medivax to evacuate. Oliveira is still on an army supply lead, but just needs to make sure they're in the right place at the right times. As you come pressing forwards here as Olive as uh, Rogue is going to jump onto these Liberators. How many of these Hydras is going to survive through this though? The Lurkers burrow up. I'm not sure if this was really all that pretty. The Overseers are blocking. The Liberators are still there. Rogue just threw away his army. He's just going to die. Oh man, he just played such a... He was in some trouble throughout the game, but I honestly feel like he was playing a pretty darn good game. Three best of fives tomorrow if I'm not mistaken. Bottom left, our blue Terran player up one in the best of three. It is going to be Oliveira. Will he net himself through into that next round? To play against creators in the top left, our red Zerg player. This is a rogue. Look at this from Rogue. Gas and pool early. Rather than a hatchery. It's just a little bit different here as we get settled in. Drones running about again. Cool coming up. We get settled in. Figure out what my goal is going to be here. As the gas continues to mine from Rogue. Ah, spawning pool done. Unless you would imagine at least link speed coming through. There it is. Link speed coming up for the moment. Speed, couple lings all coming about here. Command center's coming up as well. 
get ourselves settled in for a few moments. Just gonna get our factory coming through as well in a couple of moments so we get that on the way. Yeah, factory's coming up with the command center coming by as well, so we get all of that coming up here currently. Seeing where we're going. Lings on the move. It's gonna be seen our arrow. Slow links around on the Reaper. Oof. Well. That doesn't happen every day. Now link speed's done. We're gonna run into the natural and well there's not gonna be anything there. Yeah, losing the Reaper is actually kinda rough for you. Overlord Speed coming up from Rogue, which means he's actually, honestly, more than anything, going to be trying to be safe here. Overlord Speed keeps you pretty safe, typically. And Ling's Gathering is going to be seeing the SCV still coming out. The Marine's going to come over. And overlord speed about halfway done. Queen and the overlord continuing up. And back in a few marines. Also on the way out as well. He is just bringing all of that into play. Almost sad that Rogue isn't being aggressive after catching the Reaper. But obviously the overlord speed is going to allow him to scout and be very safe. Like I said, I just don't know if that's necessary because... Well, I mean, obviously we can see it's not necessary, so it's always going to be a biased opinion from us. Alright, Overlord, it will take a few more shots of damage. A couple of Overlords moving back and around. Stimpak on the way up. A couple of Barracks and the Reactor coming in as well. Overlords are just going to be able to run away. Hey, Overlord Speed just saved itself there. Something at least, isn't it? Queen's gathering, drones on the move, melee upgrades coming up here on the side of Rogue. As you can see, our Marine's going to get forward, going to pick off that Overlord. Take that out as a couple Queens and a few Overlords all continue up into place, bringing all of that into action here. For the moment. Drones about halfway done here now. That coming up, the melee upgrades coming through, the couple queens in production as well. Artifacts load and we'll head to the upper left hand side. Just gonna grab the overlord off the marines. Well, there, I drop into the main base actually, a little bit of a different uh, direction to attack in, but. Uh, Rogue's gonna start moving over here with a couple of lings. Queens get there as well. Marines are gonna just sim and fight those queens. First queen down. That's not good. We're gonna lose multiple queens here. We could have target fired down that last one, but we didn't. First medivac drops. The rest of the lings going down. So now the Marines get to stay active in this main base. It's becoming a problem. We get forward onto the queens again. Get one more, and it looks as though we'll leave. We do lose another medivac though. Kind of back on that left hand side. Just gonna come moving about. Just gonna relocate a little bit. One one upgrade, the combat shield, all of that continue to come through. It's gonna be seeing the lings running forward. Wouldn't mind getting a bit of a catch. Yeah, I mean run by is okay, but it's not gonna be anything spectacular, right? And 1-1 one, one in combat shield continues to come on in. Just gonna have our rest of our lings getting turned around once again. Just getting chased out of here. Take the upgrades. Thorough coming up. The Hydra Den is coming in as well. The Viking firing up on a couple of different overlords currently. 
go down. Again, the Baneling speed is starting up on the side of Rogue, so bringing the Bane speed into play. A few of these Banes already getting going. The Ling's going to get across, chase the Medivac away too. Just push that out of there. Continue to run across. We're going to see a couple of Marines getting caught. Another Marine up on the high ground going down. Widowmine shot is good. Marines continue to cross to chase the Lings away. Still got our T2 melee upgrades. Bane speed coming up. Ling Bane gathering as Widowmines drop into the main mineral line as well. A couple of Widowmine shots. Going to get rid of a Queen. Actually went on two different Queens, so neither of them die. And they will just be able to transfuse each other, so... Just a little bit of a wasted uh, couple of mines. Like I say, if they both targeted the same Queen, could have had a kill. Didn't go down like that as Olivera tries to push up the right. Gonna get a few Zerglings on his move forward here. A couple of Banes start showing up. Shots going off, just gonna be seeing the Danes coming through as well. Gonna be seeing a couple more shots continue to come about. As that's coming back through, more damage being done. Siege, I'm gonna get rid of a queen, but then that queen will go down. Libra gets picked, medevac and chased around as well. And Bane's just gonna continue to jump on forward. See, Bane's gonna jump in towards this mineral line. Oh, so many SCVs going down as Rogue. Gonna blast all the way across the map and straight in here, and this time the damage on this side might just be enough. Third base actually dies as well. So Lings is gonna try and wrap around. Medivac's gonna pull back. An infestation bit coming through. Lings and Bane still coming in. Just gonna be having ourselves the factory pulling away. The rest of the Lings still running through. It does look as though we might get a game three in our final game of the day. Rogue is battling back through against Oliveira. Now, Oliveira is not going to be completely dead yet, apparently, but so much of his supply is actually in Medivacs that he may as well be completely dead because he actually has no real fighting units. Medivacs need something to support, so as Rogue just kind of jumps on the army, Cyanie, as we get this underway, we get this rolling. Game number three of this series, as we kick off into the bottom left hand corner of the map, this is going to be our blue Terran player. This is Oliveira. Top right hand side, our red Zerg. It is going to be Rogue. He ties the series up. He takes us to one final map, and we are going to see who is going to take this down. Who gets to move on to tomorrow's games? Winner of this play's creator, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep, winner of this play's creator. So, yeah, just to run through what will happen tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll start off with Shin versus Cure. Then we'll have. Creator versus the winner of Rogue and Oliveira. Those are both going to be best of three. Then we're going to go best of five mode with Nightmare versus the winner of Shinkua. Dark versus the winner of the Creator uh, Rogue Oliveira matchup. They uh, are both best of fives. And then a best of five in the lower bracket semi finals. And that leaves three matches to be played out on the final day of competition on Saturday Max Pax Clem, the lower bracket finals, and the grand final. So that's going to be the way that everything gets set up and settled and all the rest of it so be excited about all of that if you do so wish as we go into this game number three Oliveira and Rogue who is going to take it down who is gonna close it out as a barracks is on the way up over here from Oliveira the hatch cast and pool the build from Rogue nothing too wild this time like gas pool last time didn't really do too much really the initial opener was not really super impactful i 
Let's see if he's just getting up to the top. Just going to get moving through a little bit. We're just going to be having ourselves the queen on the way up as well. Bringing that through again, that going. Hey, how's it, Bowie? Thank you so much for the 54-month resub. Appreciate it. I've even got a fight. A couple of lings already taking some shots, taking some hits, being thrown back a little bit as well. Continue to fight the feelings, continue to come around. Now, yeah, those couple of Hellions continue up. Link speed is on the way. Yes. So far, this game, just the Reaper going down again. And Oliver, not great at keeping his Reaper alive, apparently, in these games. Back up to the top. Feeling's gonna take some damage. And Hatch are going through. A few drones coming in. A couple queens coming online. Hellions and the Viking on the way up from Oliveira as the Feelings continue to nibble at the rocks there. Hyperflight Rotors on the way up from Oliveira as well. The Feelings continue to nibble onto the rocks for now. And again, our queens will continue up. So bringing those queens into play. Hellions will continue up to the top side. Again, a couple of drones, a few queens, a couple of overlords, all of that being brought into play for the moment. The Hellions will uh, back away into the center once again. The queen going to stop to throw a cheeky little uh, inject down too. The queens are going to be there. The Hellions get turned away. And Hyperflight Rota is still coming up. The Kellyans taking some serious damage. Two of them just going to get pop popped like that. And they go down immediately. Going back over, just going to be seen again. Hyperflight Rotos coming up. Banshee on the way. Stimpak building as well. Now it's going to get some damage done. A little bit being done. Nothing crazy. ourselves the uh one upgrades and the stim pack continue to come through as well just getting that all up and rolling here now obviously you have ourselves the upgrades coming by it's gonna be an advantage for Oliveira, but rogue will have that bailing speed which is one of the big things he's typically going to be looking to play for in this And we'll shoot a couple of crypt humans going down. One more upgrades and stem still coming up. The extra barracks coming over. Queens are going to be there to push the Hellions away. And the extra links building with Bane Speed about to be done. Let's see if uh, Rogue can make something happen on that Bane Speed. 71 drones already. It's not like he's looking to be super aggressive, just ready to deal with any aggression of his opponent as the first Banshee falls quickly. Cloakless Banshees, so they can't cloak up into safety. It's going to be Queen to deflect here. Yeah, just Hyperflight Road of Banshees that don't really do anything. Hyperflight Road is so weird to kind of go into for just two Banshees. So we've seen a few of those links still getting taken down. I 
think we misclicked the hyperflight rotas. He's meant to have cloak, or if this really is like a designed play. Very curious. This is a little bit strange. This is going to be seen. I won one, and the combat shields continue to come up as well. The bands continue to gather. Marines and the tanks coming across. Still got ourselves the burrow. Coming up to you. Being about halfway done. So just going to get that wrapped here. As do have the Vikings still overhead. And this army is going to be collecting up. And already coming through the middle of the map. The Marines are going to jump onto the overlord for a couple of moments. Ovi so taking some damage. Going to get pushed away to the side for just a little bit as well. Well, creep team is going down. Big stim through the center. So much of that creep getting cleaned out immediately. Again, melee upgrades. The burrow coming through. I think it's going to continue onto this set of rocks over here as well. So those rocks will continue to drop. We see now our uh, little scan comes about. Stim through to get rid of the creep tumors. Bang comes back across, just having ourselves the uh, Marines still stemming up, gonna get rid of some more creep. And the Queen in the front there, that's in a little bit of trouble as well. The Banes and the Lings continue to come back over as Oliveira is gonna be in position defensively, and the tank's gonna do serious work, pulling back in the wrong direction with some of the units. A little bit of a pathing error there is gonna cost him a few more Lings. We are gonna now try and dive onto this main force of Oliveira though, so. I like the idea from Rogue. Unfortunately, I feel like the tanks are still going to do a lot of damage to the Banes. So while this should have been a good fight, the Banes were so clumped that, honestly, they didn't do much at all. And Oliveira might even get across the map now. Rogue lost a lot to that attack. Those tanks put some serious work onto those Banelings. Those Banelings dropping down in a big way. That's going to be extremely expensive. And now, like I say, Oliveira will be across the map, sieging and potentially applying some great pressure for us. Let's see what we can do here as Rogue. There's a few Banes left. More morphing. 20 in production, actually. Is that going to be good enough as we just see our few queens getting uh, pushed back a little bit right now? Here we go. Ling Bang is running forwards. That is up against the wall, by the way. So we could not kite backwards or split backwards there. That was just going to be uh, hit the wall and have to lift up into the medivacs. Queen's still getting to work. A few more of these lings getting taken down. The Bane's still running across. Queen's continuing to get to town as well. Let's do have our 2 2 melee upgrades coming up. Rogue, the Hive, and the Hydro Den coming online. 13 additional Bane Lanes coming up too. And the Marines continue to unload from these medivacs as we jump back in and retreat down the exact. Yo, Eidegar. Oh, Eidegar. Eidegar. Thank you so much for the Prime Sub. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting the stream today and our casting coverage of the FNs as our units from Rogue. Gonna rotate back around the top, so the Ling Bang gonna move in over there. The Hive and the Lurker Den coming up as well. Oh, recovering from that uh, previous fight that was not looking so pretty then, and I mean, not really uh, dying. That's good. I really did think that could have been a, a big issue, to be honest. Bane continues to cross. I'm just going to see the links here. Going to wrap around for a little bit. Tanks and Marauders all going down as well. So a bunch of damage still being done. The army now coming all the way down to the south. We've got a couple of Liberators still coming up. Widowmines, Marines, and Marauders on the way in. These links are going to wrap around the siege tank. And the Widowmines shots not going to do too much here in Rogue. We've seen how good he can be on the counterattacks. And what's amazing is that the, those depots are down, which means he doesn't have to Bane bust his way in, which means the Banes can roll into the mineral lines. At the same time, as you can see, Oliver is running across over here. The SCVs are going to begin dying en masse due to those attacks on the other side. We are going to get this forced lift, and that's going to be a cleanup. And let's check back in over here. 22 dead SCVs is obviously a huge number. Rogue coming back around different directions. I love that he's getting rid of some of these depots, because that's going to open up the opportunity to move forward in the future for him as well. If he just keeps picking off these depots, I mean, it's also going to slowly push Oliver towards maybe being supply blocked as well. Behind us, show up there and again pushing that medevac drop back. Oliveira 133 out of 162. Army supply is still fairly even. A couple of Vipers coming up now from Rogue as well. He's going to accompany that with the seismic spine upgrade and the plus one missiles and the Hydra speed. Plus, the Augments is about to finish. So, a lot of stuff on the way here currently from Rogue. 
to improve his position and to really kind of do what he's done well in the previous games, which is to kind of get into spots where he's able to kind of eventually kind of, you know, be aggressive in the mid game and then end up on those lurkers and those all units that are very difficult to get rid of deeper in the game. I mean, obviously, it didn't actually work out for him in game one, but I really felt like he was in a good position game one. He just then threw it in one big attack. Obviously, this uh, game two, they haven't really got to the tacking up portion. He really killed Oliver with the big counter attacks that he set off. Gonna be another attempt now of attacking up stage of the game as adrenal glands are gonna accompany the lurk attack. That is gonna be on the way. So things are gonna be even better here very soon. Oh, these few Bane's gonna catch some SCVs as well. They just ran in from the side. Gonna find seven workers. That, uh, that command center there's been burning for a little bit. Let's uh, put it back on fire again. Oh, Widow Mines getting up to the top. Seven SCVs went down. Olivera has rebuilt SCVs comfortably after the few times he's lost them in this game, so his economy has been kept up as that's a great catch from Rogo. Gets rid of the Widow Mine drop immediately. That's an amazing catch, in fact. CC drops down. Widow Mine setting up. Six SCVs dying. Oh, we're on that mineral line as well as we do have ourselves the adrenal glands coming through. Like I say, Rogue, I think, is just taking it fairly slow to set up further forwards here. Is trying to clean up some widow mines, but good retargeting and good uh, unburrows and reburrows. Helping us to play clean up there too. All that Ling Bane gathering up. It's going to be seen our Bio's going to step forward. Going to go after some of the creep tumors here as well. Try and get a little bit more done at the moment as we have got ourselves a plus two missiles, a plus three carapace coming through. The Lurkers in production for Rogue. So that is going to be a big step up for his army comp, while Liberator Ghost is obviously going to be a big step up for Oliveira's army composition. Ninus in the main base. We had a Ninus in that game one as well that Oliveira actually recovered from. But it is potentially a sign that he might not be able to deal with this. Probably, I think he's just pulled SCVs toward that Nidus. He's going to so send some Banelands towards this mineral line. This Planetary Fortress will go down. That's a good few SCVs with it. Nidus actually does get denied in the main base. as SCVs with a couple of ghosts that are just going to be enough. That is huge. Now you max out on both sides. So now Bio gonna fight through a couple moments. Ling's gonna get pushed back. So see these lurkers actually gonna go in the natural. Natural's not as scary because obviously in the natural, you don't have all the production you would be able to instantly siege in the main. The uh, liberators start showing up. Widow mines are gonna be there. The lurkers are just gonna have to burrow apparently, but ghosts are sniping and. I don't know if this was really worth running as many lurkers into as we did. Especially because it's like I said, it's the natural. I don't feel like we deny that much production there. Guess if he's going down more snipes, he's just about to jump a few of those lurkers back into the night to protect them. Brook sitting on 87 drones to the 60 SCVs. So a smaller army, but it has got very good income. On what is a very large map, a lot of different bases to mine from as well. So having that high work account can really work wonders here. Is the Ling Bane going to dive in toward this planetary fortress, the ghosts? Be nearby and pains crashing through initially. Get six SCVs, and again, just the base going down is a factor. I don't think we've got replacement bases right now, so I think we're actually gonna have to rebuild those fresh, and that's obviously gonna be a denial. I'm just gonna see our lings, our hydras, plus three melee coming about. The few ghosts setting up to potentially snipe around and so on. There's a Nidus in the main base. Gonna push through the main army here. A couple of abducts on the liberators. The banes, I fear, are kind of rolling a bit too deep without the support of everything else being close enough. And so the ghosts able to split back and survive. Another round of banes already set to go, though. If Rogue can keep up that kind of momentum, 
He actually might be okay. That wooden mine shot's nice. The units got caught a little bit. They, they kind of stopped for a second, so the Bane's clumped. Nidus is in the main base, and it cannot go off successfully as the Marauders get there. It's Oliveira. He's just about to get that CC that he lost before back online. He's going to finish in a moment. We're building planetaries to protect other bases at the same time. Rook has good control of the game, but it's definitely not out of reach for Oliveira. He's absolutely able to stand in this and uh, handle a lot of what's been going on very well so far, I would say. Drone's going to get back into that bottom right-hand side. We'll look to see what's going on there as we just have a few Lings getting picked away. Bio's going to be there to push the Lings back over to the other direction. Liberator Marauder all coming up on the side of Oliveira as well. The Nidus Network will continue to build through. Oh, the abduct on the siege tank. Ling Bane Hydra still pressing forward. I'm just going to continue to chase. The uh, Banes and the Hydra still trying to get forward there. Another Wooden Mine going down as well and still seeing the bio. The Wooden Mines continuing to come by at the moment. Just going to have ourselves that Nidus on the low ground getting picked off. Snipes will get rid of the Overlord as well. Take that out too as another Nidus on the top left hand side. One on the bottom. Rogue really setting up for potential attacks all over the place and that ability to move around the map effectively with the uh, Niduses. To really speed up the process of that as we do have ourselves a cluster of missiles, the lurkers all coming up. Bio ghosts coming back across, just having ourselves the lurkers setting up as well. Sort of going down, wouldn't mind just gonna fire on not really much of anything. Actually gonna start nuking here, Oliveira nuking onto that base. The Brea's set up. I mean, the Spore Crawlers <laughs> have some synchronized uh, defense as the uh, Liberators get pushed back in sync. There's the nuke landing, but Rogue saw where it was, so he pulls that back already. Just going to see the rest of the bio pushing in. Just going to go after those drones. Not going to see the Ling is going to go running after the Marines. A crazy game because it's very active all around the map at the moment. Very busy stuff as we do have 24 more Lings continuing through, plus three missiles on the way out. The Spire building from Rogue as well. The extra drone still in production is also on top of everything else right now. Yeah, what am I to try and try and defend these lurkers? A couple of them get by into the mineral line. I mean, the rest of the lurkers are just going to burrow up and fight this army, but they don't really have any protection, so yeah, they're just going to have to go run away and back the hell out of that. Lurkers are now hitting that planetary. Just going to see a couple of these vipers getting pushed back. We're actually going to start coming back to the upper right side with those. Rogue supply is draining a little bit, but I can only imagine he's waiting to build something. He's got 23 lava. Lurkers over here going to get some SCVs, but will eventually get shot down. Widow mines. What we're we gonna connect on? I'm not gonna look as the Nidus gets denied. Just wondering if the Widow Mines find big shots. They actually did pretty well, I think, for how many there were and just being abandoned. Nuke mining up, plus three missiles, about a finish. Rogue is gonna have 28 more Lings, a Hydra, Overseer's all coming about as well. I'm just gonna be having the Bane playing. They're moving through. Nice. Gonna our nuke gonna drop in for just a couple of drones. Well, drones pulling back around. Obviously, multiple different bases to keep track of from Rogue's point of view. He did get remax. I mean, he feels very stuck on this composition at the moment. Playing Bane Lurker. Where do you go from here, really? I mean, it's been too active of a game to think about. It's too big of a map and too active of a game to make broods. I mean, probably some more spellcasters is basically all you need, right? A few infestors mixed in, a couple of fungal growths, threatening. Could go a huge distance in this. So that sort of stuff, I think, could be uh, maybe the way to kind of approach it. Nidus Network's 
coming up in the main base once again, just testing to see if uh, Oliver is still dealing with that. We are already stimping units across towards the main. One of these Nidus is going to go up, Lurkers are going to pop out, and they're going to be in a great position to hit some of the production and also deny the mineral line. That's a lot of Lurkers, as we actually pop a few up from the other side, going to try and cover the ramp a little bit. Those first couple may go down, but look at the barracks just getting absolutely deletoed here. Yep, that's going to be tough to handle as uh, Rogue now is going to set up elsewhere. Bottom right side of the map, Banes and Lings crashing through to take out that base. Going to get Dove on the other side as well. So we're actually going to be seeing Rogue maybe in some trouble himself. He's going to lose the Nidus. There's actually a double Nidus here. We're going to start popping Lurkers out of those Niduses though. And he does bring those back in defense. And they're actually going to be a good defense as well. Wow, what a play. He leaves some Lurkers behind. He did, so he's still killing the production as we try and jump onto this army. But the Lings won't do it. A few Banes trying to move through. They're mostly getting shut down. Like I say, the production of Oliveira dropping though, and so it's going to be a struggle for him to keep on rebuilding out of this. Man, so clutch to get those Lurkers back at home and uh, out onto those Niduses, because he does need to keep those Niduses alive. Otherwise, you can't ever get the Lurkers back home at all, right? Unless, I mean, maybe he has other Nidus heads around the map right now. He only has those two. If he lost those Niduses, I actually think that would have been really bad for him. Obviously, in this case, it works out just great as he's knocked down so much production. There are production structures elsewhere. There are new ones building, but that obviously still comes at the cost of having to build them. Have a look at step forward again. Just going to be seeing that siege tank. Going to get grabbed immediately. Lurkers. Going to knock down the refinery here. Again, a couple of libs coming up. Marauder coming through. Extra barracks coming about. He's going to move out to the side. It's going to go after the Orbital Command, the Barracks as well. I mean, this is going to be a dead Orbital. It doesn't lift in time, so Orbital dies. I mean, Oliver is actually just losing straight up Command Centers, which is not pretty. He's going to attack down over here, this rebuilding base that uh, Rogue just got rid of a few moments ago. He's going to try and cancel the rebuild on it. We'll succeed in that very easily as well. Oliver is attacking, and obviously Rogue is going to take some damage. He will lose the top left base, but and maybe even a couple, but... He's got bases down the right side. I don't think that's too much of a concern, especially if he's going to move across and deny multiple bases of Oliveira. Rogue is strangling Oliveira out of this game, and it is Oliveira that needs to figure a way out of this right now. We do see the hatchery going down. The Banes that were here roll in. A few Lurkers return home, and they are going to try and burrow up. But there's Liberators here as well, so I can't imagine that that's going to go well. That feels like a little bit of a gift from Rogue. Oliver only has 12 SCVs. Rogue just needs to stabilize for a few moments. Don't let this army on the other side get out of hand. Your army supplies are very similar right now, but the economy is absolutely one-sided. So like I say, don't let this get out of hand. Don't lose more than you need to. If you Hydra's going down, last thing you want to do is Rogue is just not be able to kind of clean up as these couple of libs will get shot down now as well. Oliver pushed away from there. I don't think Rogue needs to do anything else in the bottom left. Pull back, defend for the moment. We've seen the Widow Mine, the rest of the bio continuing through. Six Hydras of Rogue continuing to produce. Lurkers and Burrow from the gold base location. Just going to see the bio continue to go toward the upper right hand side of the map. Things, Banes, Hydras, Lurkers continuing through. Just going to be seeing the ascent. Uh, Liberator Siege Dub. We are going to see a couple of Widow Mine shots coming out. Rogue's army supply is low, guys. It's a little concerned. We're going to get some Vipers up right now, some Spellcasters to help. I mean, Oliver is basically all in with his army. His income is going to be very minimal. He's going to try and get a new orbital to the gold base. He has very low income. Have you seen our... Defense then from Rogue just needs to be Starward. And if he holds, he wins this game. 27 minutes on Alcyon. Yo, did I ask for a 20 minute game? I think I did. Look at me getting what I want. So spoiled. Liberator Sieging. Just going to be seeing nine more Lurkers coming through. Marines going to go after a couple of drones. The drones still dropping. Lurkers setting up Medivac with Marines. Coming in from the top side. The change is going to move forward as well. Forty-nine drones from Rogue. I mean, what bases does he still have to mine from? He's got this one. That's great. 
And he doesn't really have a lot of bases of mind from either, to be fair. He's oversaturated with what he's got. It's not like he's got a ton of income, but it's still more than his opponent for now. Rogue probably has to get another hatch. Yeah, I was going to say back up in the top left or so, because if he doesn't get a hatchery up elsewhere, he's going to be in some serious trouble mining soon, and his opponent is going to start re-expanding with the command centers. So, yeah, you gotta you got to do that as Rogue, and that's definitely what we see him doing. Olivera just scanned that right side base, the bottom right base, but he's not going to move across to do much. That's an abduct to kill off the medevac. Beautiful. Anything that counts as free supply. And Yeah, Olivera, what do you do? Do you dive to the bottom right base? Do you try and stop the top left from coming online? Honestly, I don't know if Rogue could have maybe just taken the, the kind of like 5 o'clock base, the base kind of southwest of uh, yeah, this one, basically, down here. I wonder if that would have been better for him to kind of be able to defend two bases in, in one kind of uh, position, because now... I feel like he might actually kind of lose both bases even, because he loses this one. Terran has that ability to ping-pong around the map easily, so you've got to be super careful defending this right now. That comes back over, Medivac's joining up. They move up this ramp, Lurk is going to burrow, so we're going to start putting ourselves in position here. The few Widow Mines start to drop. Ghosts need to be careful as they run forwards, getting their snipes cancelled by the Lurker shot so far. That's the problem of just not having enough ghosts, right? There is a situation where we should have took this Liberator, by the way, and just get rid of that lip, because then you can move up this ramp without issue. Rogue, you do you do have Vipers, Rogue. You do not need to be doing this as slowly as you are. I understand you maybe don't want to rush up the ramp, but, like, just getting rid of the Liberator just seems like a common-sense play right now. He's going to abduct Ghost. Now he abducts the Liberator. We'll get that as well. Okay, and Ghost going down, too, to the abducts is going to be painful. Now he runs up here. This gold base is going to be denied. And at this point, I guess, we're basically playing chase down the Terran army. Um, we're going to see all of our Zergs survive this day, aren't we? Rogue looking as though he's got this one in the bag. Three Zergs in this tournament. All three of them going to make it at a day four out of five. Hydra, Bane, Lurk are going to come in chasing, hunting as Oliveira lifts up before saying GG's. That is going to be Rogue. Two to one over Oliveira. Fantastic final game. Fantastic series. And Rogue knocks down our pre-